Hello! Uh, Jesus H. I've been gone for like two weeks and none of you sent out a search party. I could have been trapped under a tree eating my own foot. I really apologize for anything because I rarely give a shit. But I feel like I have to apologize for the beat up Mountain Dew cap. What do you... Oh. What? It doesn't even fit anymore because I've lost weight. And when you lose weight, you don't realize how big a head you have. And so I lost head fat. And so it doesn't fit. It's just kind of sitting on top of there, covering up hair that is like 10 kinds of messed up. So yeah, that's not, yeah. For the past couple of weeks, I have been working on getting out of my rut. And today I want to speak entirely about my reading rut and about books and things like that, since I have a book haul, quite a big one. And I, yeah, and I'm reading stuff and I've actually finished stuff in that time frame. So yeah, it's looking up. Things are looking up. But I will show you what I've been doing. As you know, when I walk, and I try to walk daily for like five or six miles, it takes like an hour and a half sometimes, sometimes two hours, um, sometimes less. I, yeah, I don't know. It depends on where I go. But I always listen to an audiobook while I'm walking. This time I'm listening to Stephen King's nonfiction take on the horror genre, uh, Danse Macabre. Yeah, so, and it's kind of, it's really been very helpful in um, helping with the writing rut. On my Nook, I'm reading Chuck Wendig's Blackbirds, which is a really sort of irreverent and dark and gloomy take on the urban fantasy genre um, about someone who can see people's deaths and yeah, it's creepy. I've been reading a lot of graphic novels. In fact, I just finished um, Lock and Key Head Games, which is volume two in the Lock and Key series by Joe Hill, uh, Stephen King's son, by the way. It's like, I'm keeping it in the family today. And art by Gabrielle Rodriguez. This is a really fun series if you haven't read it uh, about a, a family that's coming to terms with their father's death and they move to his childhood home which is called Key House and there's lots of keys everywhere that do really weird things like turn people into ghosts and open up their heads so you can put things in and out of them. It's just bizarre stuff and the art is really great and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I'm in between books on that one so I picked up because I always like, I like graphic novels at night like when I'm about to go to bed I find. I'm reading um, Mike Carey's The Unwritten, uh, artwork by Peter Gross. And yeah, this is pretty fantastic take on like fantasy, um, sort of fantasy books, uh, literature, uh, the fantasy of words themselves. It's kind of, it's bizarre. And I'm really enjoying that. I'm just getting into that right now. I have other stuff that I'm reading and that I had to put on the back burner, but I really need to get to quickly because I've, you know, I've got some NetGalley books that are going to drop off and not be available on my Nook anymore. And I, I definitely want to get to st finish Struck by Jen Bosworth and, yeah, and um, Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. I'm, I'm at a loss. I've got to get some stuff done. But in the meantime, of course, I couldn't possibly not buy a whole bunch of books. In the last couple of weeks, um, my sisters from the Harbingers of Doom slash Class of 2K12 slash Apocalypses had some launch parties in my local area. And since we're all buds, I made sure to attend both of them. Jennifer Wolf's Breaking Beautiful, which I've heard is a really excellent mystery, and I'm looking forward to reading that. And Jay Anderson Coates' book, The Wicked and the Just, came out, and she had a lovely launch party at a wine tasting cellar up in Everett and that was really nice and yeah so those are some new books that you need to check out for sure. This is the year I kind of want to pick up the Gunslinger series, Stephen King's Gunslinger series. I have never even attempted it. I don't know why. These are so old at this point. When was the first one even done? First plume printing September 1988. Yeah so this series has been going on for a long time and I just have not gotten to it and I plan to. I've definitely gotten to it. I went to Walmart this week and much like when you find a puppy roaming through the aisles or a small child without a parent. You find those at Walmart all the time. Not as often as you would find a dirty diaper in their parking lot. Um, open face, usually. I don't know why that is, but it always seems to happen. I found that they were having a big bargain book sale and I had to rescue some books because they probably would not have gone to as good a homes. I'm just saying. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's possible. I did pick up The Mysterious Benedict Society and The Prisoner's Dilemma by Trenton Lee Stewart. And yeah, I have the first book in this series. I believe this is the third one. I have not read it, but it was sitting in there and I thought, oh my God, I have to get it because it's like $2 and that's not right. That's not right. I also picked up very funny, Pretty in Plaid. 
it does have a, a subtitle, which is A Life, A Witch, and A Wardrobe, or The Wonder Years Before the Condescending, Egomaniacal, Self-Centered, Smartass Phase. Jen Lancaster is really hilarious. She actually blurred my first adult book, and um, she, I, you know what? I, I can't get enough. It's the voice, really. It's the snarky, uh, don't give a shit voice that I, I love. And, and I keep coming back to year after year. But it was in the bargain bin. I can't let my buddies be in the bargain bin. <laughs> can't I know. At Jennifer Wolf's launch party, I won a book. I won Miranda Keneally's Catching Jordan, which is a, I, I think a teen sort of romance about a girl who wants to play football. She's a girl doesn't want to be surrounded by gorgeous jocks day in and day out. Uh, one who maybe doesn't have a tolerance for stupidity. I don't, I'm not saying they're all stupid. Some of them are. Come on. This weekend we did this teen author showcase, which was cool, down in um, Olympia. And there were a lot of us down there. And yeah, we talked a lot. And my wife came and my best friend. And they sat in the back and texted each other about how all of us authors were getting on their nerves. <laughs> so there you go. And everyone else, they're horrible people, is what I'm telling you. Let's see, I picked up a, this from the library, I Hunt Killers by Barry Liga. I am probably going to have to buy this one because I don't think I'm going to get to it before it's due. It makes me sad because it sounds like a really cool concept. Um, the, the protagonist is the son of a notorious serial killer. Reminds me a little bit about of Slice of Cherry by Dear Reeves. We'll see. This one is fantastic. Christopher Moore's got a new book out, y'all. Sacre Bleu, a comedy dart. D apostrophe A-R-T. By Christopher Moore. This book is beautiful. This is actually the dust jacket right here. Just, this book is beautifully designed. This is actually one of those hard shell covers. The, um, the cover looks a little art deco, like Toulouse-Lautrec. It's all about the French art movement. And oh, it's got a beautiful like Parisian map inside and all in color, insanely nice. Deckled edges, um, lots of blue ink on the inside. In fact, the entire thing is written in blue. And I'll read you the back because this is like one of my big things is anytime a Christopher Moore book comes out, I have to drop everything and read it. It is the color of the Virgin Mary's cloak, a dazzling pigment desired by artists, an exquisite hue infused with danger, adventure, and perhaps even the supernatural. It is Sacre Blue. In July 1890, Vincent van Gogh went into a cornfield and shot himself. Or did he? Why would an artist at the height of his creative powers attempt to take his own life and then walk a mile to a doctor's house for help? Who was the crooked little color man Vincent has claimed was stalking him across France? And why had the painter recently become deathly afraid of a certain shade of blue? These are just a few of the questions confronting Vincent's friends. Baker turned painter, Lucien Lessard, and bon vivant Henri Toulouse-Lautrec who vowed to discover the truth about Van Gogh's untimely death. Their quest will lead them on a surreal odyssey and brothel crawl deep into the art world of late 19th century Paris. Ooh la la, quel surprise, and zut alors. A delectable confection of intrigue, passion, and art history, with can-can girls, baguettes, and fine French cognac thrown in for good measure. Sacre Bleu is another masterpiece of wit and wonder from the one and only Christopher Moore. If you don't know Christopher Moore, you really need to get involved in that because he is funny as hell and um, he's, his work is only getting better. That's all I've got. I don't have anything else. What do you want me to show you? I don't know. You know what though? I did do a video over the weekend and if you want to go see me talk about what are going to be some hot trends in the future of YA, you can check out my YA Rebels video right here. Click on that because that's, you know, if there's one thing people who are into the internet know how to do, it's click. It's, it's tap our fingers. That's what we do. But click there. It's very short. It's very short and I'm I, kind of funny. Probably. Probably much more funny than this one. So there you go. That's it. I